Somewhere Better by I, Anushash Am, Anushash Eli, on AO3. Episode 48, Chapter 7, Stuff. Good morning, kids, the teacher said, standing up from her desk and walking in front of the whiteboard. Today, she said, picking up a hot pink marker, is a very important day. On the board, in bright pink ink, she wrote the date, May 9th, and under that, Mother's Day. Today, we will be having an all-day art day, and we will be making Mother's Day cards. Izuku, from where he was sitting at the table, frowned. Beside him, Ochako did the same, and across from him, Otoshi tucked his head into his arms and seemed to have gone to sleep. Ochako was still staying with her grandmothers, though now money seemed to be as tight as her as if it had been with her parents. Izuku had been informed that her parents were still working to make more money so she could come home, but it was going slow since there wasn't a lot of business. It was a frustrating cycle all around for Izuku and Ochako. Ochako didn't complain a lot, but Izuku knew that she came to school tired and worn down because she had to take care of her sick grandma every day after school, make sure she was taking her medications, that she hadn't gotten ill in the night. Izuku had helped her memorize the number for an ambulance, the fire station, and her parents, just in case. They had worked on that instead of art time, and Izuku hadn't been able to draw the castle he'd been working on for Auntie Nemi, but that was okay. Ochako got called from her parents every other day, but she hadn't been able to see them in person since her grandmother was diagnosed a month ago. Izuku wondered if she did make a card for her mother, if she would be able to see it in person and give it to her. The teacher passed out construction paper, little containers of sparkly flakes, glitter. It was glitter, pink and purple glitter that glittered under the light, and scissors with little plastic guards over the blades. Then she passed out one bottle of glue for each table and walked back to the front of the room. The teacher grabbed the pink marker again. It was a little squeaky noise as it wrote on the board, and Izuku saw Danki and Itoshi who had picked himself out from under his hiding place, wince in unison. It was a rather unpleasant sound, squeaky and sharp. Anki Sho would hate it. She wrote instructions on the board, ideas for what they could do with their cards, hearts, flowers, diamonds, and various other shapes they could cut the construction paper into. She said that the glitter could go in the sparkling containers around the edges of the paper, and that it would make it more colorful and eye-catching. Izuku wasn't sure what eye-catching meant, but it didn't sound very pleasant. Hitoshi was the first to grab a piece of paper, hot pink. He then grabbed a paper sheet and started cutting the pink piece into a shape, reminiscent of a star, and then the purple paper went on as a trim. Then, looking up from the board to make sure he would spell it correctly, he wrote, Happy Mother's Day, in sloppy kanji, and poured the entirety of one of the containers of glitter onto the card. It had happened quickly, in less than four minutes, and every other inhibit of the table had started at the boy in fascination. When he was done, he leaned back in his chair, chin falling against his chest. His eyes shifted up a bit to look at them, noticing their stares, and all the other children quickly looked away. Ochako's card was made with only one paper of orange construction paper. May's card was red. Dinky's card was a bright, sunny yellow. Izuku wasn't sure what to do with his card. His mommy's batteries had died a long time ago, months and months ago, and they had already buried her deep in the ground. How was he supposed to make a Mother's Day card if he couldn't give it to his mother? He stood up, walked towards the teacher's desk, and stood there, waiting awkwardly as the teacher typed away at her computer before turning to look at him. She smiled at him, and it had that same fake look to it it always had, like a Barbie doll. Yes, Midoriya? The teacher questioned, and Izuku tilted back on his heels, then forward, then back, then forward again. He had to choose his words carefully. That's what Anki Sho had told him. Two days after the bad doctor's appointment, he had to be more careful with his words if he wanted something, or wanted to know something. It would be important for hero work and everyday life, Anki Sho had said. I'm not very adept at choosing words either, Shota said, looking a bit frustrated for a moment, before the look melted off his face. But it is important, okay, Zuku? 
It's very important. And I know enough to teach you. Izuku didn't think Anki Sho knew enough to teach him, but he wouldn't say that, because he didn't want to hurt his Anki's feelings. Anki Sho always seemed awkward and stiff when he talked, like he was holding his breath, and it made telling him things a bit difficult, but that was okay. He chewed on the inside of his cheek and thought back to what Anki Sho had told him. Be polite. Be direct. Argue your point. Don't sound disrespectful, or it will kick you right back to square one. Sensei, I can't make a card, Izuku said. Sensei was respectful, and being respectful was good. Anki Sho and Anki Sashi told him that often. And respect meant polite. Anki Sho had told him that when he asked what respectful meant. He'd gotten right to the point, and that was direct, wasn't it? He thought it might be. Why is that, Midoriya? The teacher asked and she looked very tired and a bit annoyed. That wasn't what Izuku had wanted. Hadn't Anki Sho told him that being polite was the best course of action? That that was the best way to communicate? Anki Sashi had said something like that too once, or twice. Izuku, you need to be nice. Anki Sashi had said after Izuku had gotten into a minor altercation with another boy in the park. And polite. Always be polite, Izuku. But, but it wasn't my fault. Izuku had exclaimed. He was mean to me. He made fun of my my hair and my shirt and and he called me weird names. Defending yourself is important, Anki Sashi had said. But you can't beat fire with fire, little listener. Even if he's mean to you, don't mean being back. Be the bigger man. But Izuku had frowned. He wasn't sure what fire with fire meant but it didn't seem like the appropriate moment to ask. But I'm not a man. Anki Sashi had laughed and ruffled his hair, and the conversation had ended there. Sensei, I don't have a mommy, Izuku exclaimed. Didn't you know that? Hadn't Anki Sho told her that before? Izuku thought he had. He could remember Anki Sho pulling the teacher aside when he thought Izuku couldn't hear and telling him the do's and don'ts. The teacher wasn't very good at remembering, because she had gone against the do's and don'ts several times already. Just make a card for someone who fills that role in your life, Midoriya. The teacher said, looking a bit impatient. I don't know what you mean, Izuku said hesitantly, eyebrows scrunching up in confusion. The teacher had sighed heavily before writing herself, jaw and back looking a bit stiff like she was trying to keep from snapping at him. Anki Sho sometimes did that, when he and Anki Sashi had arguments, trying to keep from yelling and hurting Anki Sashi's feelings. You live with your uncle. He takes care of you and makes you food. And all that, make a card for your uncle. She turned back to the computer. Make a Mother's Day card for Anki Sho. But Anki Sho wasn't his mommy. His mommy was in a cemetery with all the rocks and dead flowers and crabgrass and crying families. Anki Sho was his family, and he cared about Anki Sho, and he loved him very much, and he and Anki Sashi did a good job taking care of him. But neither of them were like his mother. They didn't act like his mommy. His mommy had been small and quiet and soft voice. His Ankis were tall, way taller than his mommy, almost as tall as his dad. And Anki Sashi was loud, and Anki Sho was grumbly. Mommy had run her fingers through his hair and had helped him pick out toys and had cuddled him on the couch. And Anki Sho and Anki Sashi did that too, but they were still weren't his mommy. He thought he might miss his mommy, just a bit. Not because he wasn't happy with his uncles, but just because he loved his mommy so much and he wanted her to come back. Maybe if she came back, he would have time to fix her so her batteries wouldn't die and they wouldn't have to bury her again. Maybe, if he was able to fix her, she would be happy, so she would let him see Anki Sho and Anki Sashi and Auntie Namuri, maybe even live with them, and then he'd be so happy. There was an extra man in that picture too. The picture in his mind were bad things didn't happen, and his mommy didn't have to be buried, and Izuku didn't really get sad sometimes, and his dad didn't go to America and leave him, and his mommy, and never come back. He sat back down at his table. Matoshi was on the other side, 
head tucked into his arms and fast asleep, snoring. And there were bright pink glitter in his purple hair, and he looked a bit like a cupcake Izuku had seen in a bakery window once. Purple frosting and pink sprinkles. Dinky hadn't looked up from his card. He was cutting his card into odd little shapes and gluing them together to form what looked like the beginnings of a heart. He was gluing them with a glitter and glue mixture, and it looked good so far. Dinky had always been one of the best out of all of them at art, Izuku being a close second, and Mei just behind him. Izuku thought it might be because Dinky liked books, and he tended to get lost in his drawings and art projects once he began them, and when he was working on one of them, the rest of the world was put on hold. Izuku's friend had always had a single mind determination when it came to things he enjoyed. Izuku admired that. Izuku made his own card, partly because there wasn't really a rule saying he couldn't make a card for his mommy, even if she wouldn't be able to see it, and partially because he didn't want to get in trouble with the teacher. He got in trouble with her a lot, and he felt like she didn't like him much, and that's not what Izuku wanted. He used a green sheet of construction paper and cut it into a heart, trying to keep it as even as possible, but still managing to make it look vaguely like a pickle. Then he drew smaller hearts inside the heart, and he wrote Happy Mother's Day, Mommy on the card. And he hadn't looked at the board when he did it, and his eyes were burning and going blurry, so he ended up misspelling a few of the words. He put some of the glue on his fingers and dragged it along the edges of the heart, and then sprinkled purple glitter along the edges, as well as shaking the excess off. It looked messy. The green paper was uneven, and it did, indeed, look like a sparkly pickle, or perhaps a cucumber. The marker had been bled through the paper, and there was a little wet drop in the middle of the paper where he had cried on it before he could wipe his tears away. Don't cry. The table of mean boys was right next to theirs. They didn't like it when Izuku cried, teased them at recess whenever he did, and Izuku knew that would only make him cry harder. He hated that his brain worked like that. He would think when someone were to tell you to stop crying, you would stop. But that was not the case. Not at all. He scrubbed away the tears. And when they kept coming, pressed the sleeve of his uniform against his eyes and kept them there, waiting for his eyes to stop burning. Deep breath in, out. It was getting better, at the very least. The burning stopped. He kept his eyes firmly closed and pushed the card out of his line of sight, not looking. That would just make the burning come back. He opened his eyes. Hitoshi was still asleep. Denki was still working. Mei had stopped making her card halfway in and had instead taken a break to make a note in her invention journal. Ochako's eyes were red too. Time for lunch, everyone. The teacher called and everyone stood up from their tables and made a line at the door. Dinky, waking up Itoshi in the process. Izuku, Ochako, and Mei all had bentos. Dinky and Itoshi both went to lunch line to get hot lunches, and Izuku talked with the two girls idly as they did. I'm almost done with my card. I'm going to finish it before recess. Mei said she had leftover fish and rice in her bento, as well as a package of peanut butter crackers. I already finished mine. Izuku and Ochako said in unison. Ochako had a peanut butter sandwich and a juice box. And Izuku had a little vento sausage that Ankisashi had cut up to look like octopus and a granola bar, a pack of gummies, a juice pouch, and a cheese sandwich. Izuku put his granola bar in Ochako's lunchbox when she wasn't looking. The teacher made me make mine, Izuku said, taking a big bite of cheese sandwich. I asked her if I could skip it, but she said no. He still didn't quite understand why he couldn't have skipped out on the project altogether, or done something else. It didn't quite make sense to him. Machago frowned at the granola bar in her lunchbox before shugging and opening it and taking a big bite. That's not very nice, May noted. Dinky and Itoshi sat at the table next to them, after getting their lunches from the line. Dinky mixed the beef on his tray with his rice. Through a mouthful of food, the boy asked, What's not very nice? When Ochako turned to look at him, Izuku picked up the package of gummies and tossed it into her lunchbox. Ochako was none the wiser, and Mei and Denki didn't seem to notice. From across the table, Hitoshi looked at him questioningly. Izuku just shrugged. 
Hunky saw she packed me extra, because of the sausage, and Ochako needed food, Izuku thought, looking at Itoshi meaningfully. Itoshi frowned, but seemed to have gotten the message. He didn't really like granola all that much anyways. The teacher! May answers Dinky's question, dragging Izuku and Itoshi's attention back to the conversation. She told Izu he had to do the card. Then he looked over at him. But you... Mm-hmm. Oh, Dinky said, eyebrows pinched together. Yeah, that's not very nice. What does she always gotta be like that too, Izu? She's not very fair to any of us, but she's even worse to Izu. Izuku shrugged. She just doesn't like us, he responded. I don't think we did anything, she just doesn't. I don't know why. She makes Satoshi talk even though he doesn't like doing that. May pointed out, and so she stared down at his lap. No, that's not... I'm not saying it's a bad thing that you don't like talking. I'm just pointing that out. Yeah, she does that. Dinky agreed, looking a bit affronted. She's mean to Toshi too, even though he's really nice. And you, Ochako said to Dinky. She thought you were cheating just because you made a good mark. Yeah, but... That's kind of... Denki took another bite of food, chewing slowly. There was gravy from the beef on his chin. Denki reached up to wipe it off with the sleeve of his uniform, before catching himself, wincing, and wiping away with a napkin. I'm kind of dumb, though, and I get bad grades. It kind of makes sense that she would think I'm cheating. Itoshi looked at Denki sharply, reaching into the pocket of his jacket for the small notebook he kept there, scribbling in it. Not dumb, smart, good grades, with help from Izu. Smart. It took Denki a moment to read it, digging his fingers under each word and sounding it out to himself. But he smiled sheepishly once he did, rubbing the back of his neck. You don't have to say that, Tosh. I know I'm not that smart, Denki said, looking at the other day placatingly. There was something else in his face, something like sadness. Or... What was the word? He had learned it a few weeks ago with Anki Sho, when they were reading a larger book that Anki Sashi had found in the used bookstore. Apprehensions? Resilience? Hitoshi scowled at him and snatched his notebook back, writing three bold underlines under the word smart. Dinky sighed. Izuku was just confused. It wasn't often that Hitoshi was upset. Other than when he was scared or nervous, or the teacher tried to make him talk or read. But Denki calling himself dumb always made Atoshi really mad. There was another thing that confused Izuku. The fact that Denki always insisted that he wasn't smart. Even when Izuku, Ochako, Mei, and Atoshi told him he was, he never seemed to believe them. Izuku didn't understand how someone so nice as Denki could ever think anyone was stupid, let alone himself. It didn't make a lot of sense. Though, Izuku suppose, it just made sense to Denki. The bell rang, and their teacher appeared, leaning them back into the classroom. Along the way, a kid stood to the side of the line, making it crooked, and the teacher said, No scrambled egg line. Re- We want spaghetti noodle line. Nice and straight. That confused Izuku too, when he thought about it harder. Okay, so that last line, the no scramble egg line, Re, we want spaghetti noodle line, nice and straight, and that confusing Izuku too, that tells me that maybe Izuku is um, also on the spectrum like Shoda. Just that one thing, that plus also some other stuff that I've noticed, and just in general, Izuku's character, he's very coded, um, uh, autistic coded, right? In general, right? So, uh, and then this fanfic especially, right? So... That's just a little thing. We could headcan it. I mean, it's not 100% confirmed, not that I know of so far, but yeah. So I want to talk about what happened in the class. So clearly, we mentioned in the in, in the end the kids talk and they're like, uh, they noticed that the teacher is always really, really mean to that group specifically. Why could that be, right? We know the answer as to why for Izuku, Hitoshi, and Dinky, right? Maybe even May, right? Um, for Izuku, it's the obvious. He's quirkless. Of course the teacher is not going to be as nice to him 
compared to everybody else. As for Dinky, he has ADHD and I feel like sometimes teachers might know beforehand or, or even so just for some reason she just really does not like the fact that he probably has ADHD. I mean it's undiagnosed but you know the, the symptoms are there. Doesn't like Atoshi because of his um, selective mutism, right, right? As for Mei, her hyper, uh, hyperness, uh, probably just the way she carries herself as well. As for Ochako, I do not know why the fuck she would not like Ochako, but for the most part, she doesn't like that whole group. That whole group, she has a vendetta against, and you could not tell me otherwise, right? And it's just so fucking annoying, right? Obviously, this chapter, we see something that is super sad, which is the point where Izuku is forced to make a Mother's Day card, when he really didn't want to make a Mother's Day card, right? And it seemed like the teacher, like, oh my fucking god, can you be any more considerate? Like, what the fuck? If a kid's mother died, unless they want to make the Mother's Day card, you do not force them to make the Mother's Day card. Do you know how traumatic that could be for, not even, yeah, how traumatic that could be for a kid sitting there and making a card for someone who's dead, knowing that they will not see that. The kid internalizing the fact that they will not see that and they're making this in vain. And them having to bring up all that grief up again, having to cry in a public area and having to just deal with that, right? Deal with the fact that I'm making this card, it is Mother's Day and my mother is not here. Imagine how hard that is for a kid. Like, what the absolute living fuck, right? I feel bad, I feel bad, I honestly do. Like, why? Why would you do that to a kid? Why would you do that? Why are you so, why are you working with kids? That's another thing. I noticed sometimes as well, like in elementary school, I had really fucking mean ass teachers. And my whole thing is, why did you get into a profession where kids are what you have to deal with 24 seven, right? And I got the answer in high school, right? Because my teacher, one of my favorite teachers, she was she was my teacher for two years. She was my history teacher first, and then she was my AP uh, psychology teacher. Loved her, Miss, um, I loved her. I loved her so much. She was she was my favorite. But um, she told me once that, um, and and another teacher confirmed this. My my theater teacher confirmed this for me as well. But um, for teachers to work at our higher grade level, they need to have more work experience as a teacher. So all teachers start in elementary school level for the most part, and they slowly make their way up to like the higher levels all the way to like college apparently i did not know that but apparently that's how it works at least in my state right that's how it works i don't know if it changes from state to state or uh country to country obviously it probably changes country to country but i don't know if it changes state from state but for my state that's how it works and um specifically this district as well that's how it works right so it's like oh so what the fuck and apparently uh she said that um, there was a teacher that once worked in elementary school with her who only worked there only because she really wanted to work on the higher levels, right? And then my teacher, she was like, honestly, when I started out, I wanted to work with little kids, but then I slowly realized I do not have the patience enough for little kids. Um, and I slowly started working up and I'm good at the high school level. I'm good here. In fact, I can't work with the freshmen. She says this, she, and I quote, hates the freshmen. She re really hates, uh, what's it called? Having freshman classes. So for the most part, it's why she has, you know, um, higher classes, right? Like she, she mainly works with juniors and, uh, seniors since those are the two classes, uh, the two years that normally take psychology now. And in the past are the two years that took history, right? And psychology as well. It's an elective. So technically speaking, a freshman can take it, but for the most part, doesn't really happen. And she's really favorable of her AP classes because even if a freshman is in the AP class, for the most part, AP classes take that shit more serious because if you don't pass and you don't get a good grade and you don't get a good grade on the AP test, you just fucking lost free uh, college credits. Like you just lost free college credits. Like that's, what the fuck are you doing? That's free money. That's free money that you threw out the window, right? Um, I did not pass my AP uh, exam. Um, no, uh, I blame, I blame, I blame, I blame my spelling. I'm not joking. I blame my spelling. Literally, it is atrocious. It is so fucking atrocious. I, that's, that's my, that's my downfall. 
That's my downfall. That was my downfall. Otherwise, I mean, like, otherwise I could tell you, like, oh yeah, this is this, this is this, this is this. I probably would have gotten the, the correct things. I also did not study at all. So I'm surprised. I think I was, um, a couple questions away from being able to pass and actually get the credits. But, um, decidedly, I didn't even try that day. L let's be honest, I didn't. I was so tired. I think I was doing a play during the time as well, so that did not help at all, right? I was backstage manager, which you would think... You know, from being, you know, the lead on a two-hour show and only having to rehearse it for, like, a month and a half, like, you know, you would think, oh, backstage manager is gonna be easy-peasy, right, compared to that shit show. No. No, I, I actually think I, I would rather go back to the, um, quick changes, two-hour show, one month and a half, uh having people fucking around in the background, having people literally be making out and dry humping in front of the prop table when I'm trying to get my prop because I have 30 seconds to get on stage, but they won't stop dry humping each other. Get the fuck away from the prop table. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, backstage manager was shit. But whatever, point again is a lot of the times teachers, um, the, I, why do teachers, why do teachers, it was one of my biggest things, like why work with kids? knowing you do not have the patience for it. Why, 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 why? Why do you do this to yourself? Why do you do this to the kids, you know? Anyways, as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.